and wind chill, problem reports are one way of initiating the change management process. Let's see about doing that. And in this particular scenario, I'm going to start off from Creo Parametric to get to Windchill. Here I've got a model that has been checked in. I can right click on it and from the pop up menu, choose View Server Properties. And this will take me to the object information page for the actual assembly that's in the workspace. I've got another button that allows me to go to the information about the object in the common space. And you'll notice that there are going to be slight differences between them. But if you want to start off a problem report, you can do that from the actions button. And then in the menu, you can choose new and you see a bunch of different things in here like promotion requests, change notice, change request, and problem reports. Be aware you might not have access to all these different choices depending on your role. And when I've implemented Windchill, I've made problem reports available to everybody. I know that there are some organizations that I've worked with where they don't allow just anyone to create a problem report. You sort of have to write up an email and then send it to someone who does have those permissions. I don't agree with that. I want people to have the lowest barrier to entry to file a problem report. Let me just click the command over here while it opens up. And especially because I found that people who work on the floor, whether they're manufacturing the parts or integrating the parts together in the assemblies, they are the best source for information. So I want them to be able to fill in this information. Anyhow, here is the form for filling out the problem report. There are actually five different steps that it has in here, but you don't have to do most of them. Let me also tell you about some of the different pitfalls that you have through here. Okay, so first off, we have a name field over here. Probably the biggest mistake that I see people make is that they put their own name in this field. Like they'll put in there Dave or Mike or Joe, whatever. And really it's better if you make sure that they understand this is really a subject of the problem report. So for example, I'm going to say that we have a cabling issue. Let me put in enough information in the title uh, to indicate the problem, chafing, comma, need grommets. And that way, if someone just looks at the title, they're going to see what it is. And here it has a field for the requester. It's going to be tied to the account of the person who created it. The reason that you have this other field over here is that situation where you're filing it on somebody's behalf. So for example, let's say that your customer is trying something out and then they call you up on the phone and they're like, hey, we were using this and we engaged it and it broke immediately. Well, then you can fill out the problem report, but then you put the customer's name in the requester field. You'll notice that the only object in here that has an asterisk is the name. That's the only required thing that you need to put in here. And so we also have different categories that you can select in here. And my particular instance has a lot of different categories in here. I'll just choose design issue in here, priority. Here we have low, medium, high, and emergency. You can fill in a need date if you want. So I could say, hey, you know, it's a medium priority. Maybe we get at the end of a couple weeks. That would be good for that. And then you have this description field where you can write in more information. But online, just put in enough information in there as someone will be, be able to evaluate and figure if it should go directly to a change request or if it's okay that you waits until some other reports are accumulated. So anyhow, we've got the first field filled out. At this point, if you filled out all, everything that you need to, you could click the finish button and that way it will be submitted. But I'm gonna go through the other different tabs over here just to show you what's involved with those. I'll click on the next button over here. So you can choose affected end items. And in another video, I'll explain what end items are. They're sort of like the WT part for the object that you're actually going to sell 
or ship as a unit. But again, you don't have to fill this out. And this actually reminds me of one other thing that I want to mention. Probably one of the other biggest mistakes that I see when people create problem reports is that they create them against the wrong object. For example, let's say that you have an engineering drawing that calls out a certain fastener and you need a fastener with a bigger diameter and a longer grip length. A lot of times we'll, people will create the problem report for the actual fastener, either the one that's currently in the model or the one that should be in the model, when really the problem report should be filed against the assembly, not the actual fastener itself. So anyhow, let me click next over here. You can add in end items if you want to. In my opinion, that's not really critical, uh, but you can do that if you want to. Let's go to the next, and here we have the affected object. So again, it lists the assembly in here that's affected. If there are other ones, other assemblies that are similar or alternatives or just related to this that would have the similar problem, you can add those in here as well. Maybe you want to accumulate other objects in here like other individual parts or drawings. You can do that as well. Let me click the next button. So here we have attachments. Now this one can actually be quite useful. The attachments that you put in here can be URLs. You can also specify an external location. What that's about is like, let's say that again, our customer was trying out our product and it broke and the customer shipped it back to us and we put it in a storage bin on the second floor in the northeast corner on the fourth shelf you could use external storage to indicate hey this is where you can actually find the hardware if you need to take a look at it and figure out what went wrong but probably the most useful one out of attachments in here is a local file so of course that could be a word document could be a pdf could be whatever but what really helps in this particular case, everyone in the world walks around with a high def camera in their pockets. If someone is going to file a problem report, what will really help is if they take a few pictures of the problem and then attach them to the problem report in here. It'll make it much easier to understand. All right, the next one that we have in here, we have this uh, to select associate associations so here we have like associated process objects associated reference objects again I don't find either of these tables really necessary for filing the problem report but again the ones I really recommend the attachments adding some pictures in here and then on the attributes writing a really really good description for the problem and if you have a suggestion for the solution put it in here like we could say in here it's like you know add slack to cable add grommets to holes there all right everything is good in here we click the finish button and now we get this confirmation. Do we want to submit the change object now? And you have two choices, submit now, submit later. And the reason that you have submit later is that maybe you start filling this out and you realize, oh, you know what, I want to go and grab a couple pictures. Uh, so I'm just going to sort of like save a draft version of this and it'll be in my tasks that to complete the report later. But I'm happy with this, so I will click submit now and it is sending it to the system. Here I have the notification and I can click on the problem report to go right to it and here it is inside of the system and it's got all the information that we filled out on the details tab. If you go to the process tab, it'll show you who it's going to and so if we take a look at the different roles involved in this, here I am as the submitter and the author. I'm also the change administration. I'm a one-man show. I'm the only person in my windchill instance, so I have to do everything. Uh, I am the change administrator, so I will end up receiving a task to review the problem report.
I know, conflict of interest. And we also have a history tab over here that will show the timeline of the object. So here it was opened and now it is under review. Pretend I am not D. Martin. If I now go to my personal home tab, here I have under tasks, since I'm change admin one, I have this task to analyze that problem report and I would go through and determine if it is valid or not and then I scroll down over here these are the different routing options so for example you could say confirmed yep this is indeed a problem not verified that happens sometimes sometimes will people will produce a or excuse me submit a prom report and you're like you know ah we can't tell if it's real or not or you can't reproduce it or you decide that, yeah, we know it is a problem. We just can't fix it. It's just going to be too expensive. It's not worth our time. You could also do it as a duplicate. You can also send it back to the originator for additional clarification. Type in the comments over there and then complete the task. And it will go on to the next step. And the next step for a change administrator might be to create a change request based off of that to determine if you're actually going to make the change or possibly even going right to the change notice to specify the steps that are necessary in order to implement a change to address the problem that's reported here. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.